Hi, my name is Chris Santiago, a Solution Architect at Project Leadership Associates, and today I'd like to talk to you about Azure Data Lake. So I'd like to start off by talking about what is Azure Data Lake. Uh, Azure Data Lake actually consists of two components. Uh, we're talking about the analytics piece and the store piece. The analytics service is the computing piece, and it sits on the same tier as other services like Hadoop, Spark, and Storm. All of these services sit on top of Yarn, which is the operating system. On the store service, it is a web HDFS data store, which allows us to store unstructured, semi-structured, and structured data. So when we talk about data lake analytics, we're talking about uh, big data as a service. And what that means is we don't have to worry about the installation, configuration, and management of your big data cluster. Data Lake Analytics also provides us the ability to pay only for the processing power used. So uh, instead of uh, worrying about the, the cluster, uh, we're only being charged by uh, uh, per job. So when I say uh, per job, I'm talking about you know, every time that we run an instance in analytics, uh, you're charged for the job instance, how many nodes that you assign to the job, as well as how long the job runs for. And lastly, Data Lake Analytics provides us the ability to increase or decrease processing power per job basis. So this is important if, let's just say, you're handling terabytes of data and you need answers fast. So we're able to throw nodes per job on that particular instance and be able to get our insights quickly. So what's the language that talks to Data Lake Analytics? And the language is called USQL. So USQL combines the declarative nature of SQL with the expressive power of c -sharp. It's a very easy language, which is very similar to Hive from Hadoop, SQL, and c -sharp. Um, In fact, it's great for developers with a .NET background. Um, when you see USQL, you'll see c -sharp methods used, and we also have the ability to extend with custom c -sharp class libraries. And finally, we're able to process unstructured data by applying schema on read, which we'll uh, cover in, our, in my example in a little bit. Data Lake Analytics is an affordable and a cost-effective solution. Um, as we've kind of discussed before, it's a, you pay on a per-job basis. There's no hardware, license, or service-specific support agreements. Basically, it's all included in the price per job. Um, you're able to independently scale, storage, and compute. Since the services uh, of analytics and store are separate, um, they're handled uh, independently of each other. Uh, unlike uh, infrastructure as a service solution where uh, storage and compute are tied to the server. Big Data Analytics is offered as a service, which means no management of big data infrastructure. We don't need to have a big data expert to come in to set up and configure and maintain the environment. And it's very simple to set up. So switching gears here, let's talk about the, the Data Lake Store. So with the Data Lake Store, uh, what it provides us is it provides us the uh, hyperscale repository for big data analytic workloads. We get no fixed limits on file size, and we're built to handle big data processing. So when we say data lot, we talk about data lake in a bottoms up approach. With the data lake, we're able to ingest various types of data types. We're talking about devices from phones, social media, a line of business applications, video, web, sensors from IoT, uh, relational databases, clickstream uh, data. So we want to ingest regardless of the requirement. Once we have the data, we want to store it in a native format without schema definition. We don't need to understand what we're going to be capturing from this data. We just want to you know, store all this data in a repository and worrying about analyzing it later. Then we want to analyze it using analytic engines like Data Lake Analytics, but we could also uh, leverage other big data services like Hadoop. So with the analysis, we're able to do batch queries, interactive queries, real-time analytics, machine learning, and data warehouse. Data Lake Store is HDFS compatible. So what that means is um, it's compatible with Hadoop distributions like Hortonworks and Cloud Cloudera. And it's also compatible with Hadoop projects like Spark, Storm, Flume, etc. We're able to use Data Lake Store as a data source for the Hadoop environment. And finally, Data Lake Store provides us ultra high capacity and massive throughput. Uh, we have no fixed limits on account size or file size. We're able to handle big file sizes. Data Lake Store also provides us low latency read write access 
and high throughput. And finally, it's built for running large analytic systems that require massive throughput to query and analyze large amounts of data. The data Lake Store was meant for big data. Um, previously, Microsoft was recommending using blob storage for uh, handling our, our big data files, but uh, um, that was meant for more of a generic repository, um, whereas Data Lake Store is meant specifically for big data storage and processing. So enough about the theory. Let's actually see Data Lake in action. So what we see here is the Azure portal. And uh, what I want to do here in, is to demonstrate how we would actually create a data lake analytics service. So once you log into the portal, the first thing you're going to want to do is click on New. From there, you want to go ahead and select Data and Analytics. And then from there, you want to select the Data Lake Analytics Service. So once you click that, you'll see this last blade here onto the right where you're actually going to create a unique name. It has to be something unique that has, hasn't been used yet. And that's for the analytics service. The next component here is this data lake store. And this is where you specify if you have an existing data lake store account or if you want to create a new one, uh, you would do so here. If you have multiple subscriptions, this is where you would go ahead and select your subscription. Uh, same thing here with the resource group. If you have an existing resource group that you want to have the analytics and store services to be associated with, you can go ahead and, uh, and select an existing one, or you can go ahead and select and, and just uh, create a new one. And finally, you would select the location. You would click OK. So after a few minutes, uh, this is what you'll see. You will see the Data Lake Analytics Blade. And from here, we're able to see uh, the settings. We're able to see graphs, which kind of shows the health of uh, the service. And then we have additional settings. Um, but more importantly, if you were to go ahead and click on Data Explorer, this gives us the option to actually see what's stored in your Data Lake store. So in the screenshot here, uh, I've collected, selected Data Explorer here. And we're now able to see uh, the storage accounts that are associated with the Data Lake Store, as well as the databases that you may have created in your Data Lake Store. To the right, we're able to see the files that are stored in our storage accounts. And from here, we're able to add, modify, delete, and even view the files that we have stored in Data Lake Store. Uh, so I want to kind of switch gears here. Uh, so Visual Studio is the tool that we are going to use um, to kind of showcase the uh, USQL functionality of, of Data Lake. So uh, before we jump in uh, on the Visual Studio piece, um, I do want to point out a few things here. If you install the Data Lake tools for Visual Studio, you're able to actually manage um, the Data Lake analytics and storage services from within Visual Studio. So if you look here on my screen here, I have the Data Lake analytics treat out here. When I select my Data Lake analytics account, I'm able to view the databases much like we were able to see in the portal. This shows all the jobs that we've uh, processed within the Data Lake Analytics service. And then if we were to expand the storage accounts here, we would be able to see the, uh, the Data Lake store. Very similar to what we've seen in the portal, you know, you're able to add, modify, delete files, um, very similar to the portal, but we're able to do it here within Visual Studio. So let's talk about a use case here where we can kind of demonstrate the functionality of Data Lake Analytics and store. So the use case that I have presented here for today was, uh, you know, imagine that we have a nightly process which collects information about drivers in our driver database and outputs it to a flat file. Our business wants to know uh, what are the top 10 number of drivers by state and country from the data set that, uh, that is provided. Um, the screen, this next screenshot here is a screenshot of the flat file that I was speaking of that is uh, generated nightly. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to point out here is um, it's a flat file. Imagine this flat file being hundreds of rows. Within this flat file, we have columns that are separated by tabs. The first column, we've got columns for uh, driver ID, uh, name, address, country, state, phone number. Notice on the last column, we have the phone number. It's uh, delimited by quotation marks. So this is kind of the flat file that we're given, and now we need to do some analytics on the data that's given in this flat file. So the next screen here is an actual USQL script that, that we're going to create to generate the query that, that we want to answer. So the first thing you see here is uh, I first declare this input drivers, which is a string. And this basically gives us the, the location of the, the drivers file that is stored in our data lake store account. 
The second parameter here we have here is the output, and this is where, where we're actually going to be outputting our data from our query. So the first thing we see here is this extract command. And this is what I was kind of referring to before about the schema on read, where <clears throat> we're able to take in an unstructured file and we're able to apply a schema to it. So if you recall from, our, from the previous uh, screenshot, you know, we've had, we had our columns for driver ID, name, street, so on and so forth. And now we're able to write this in a language so that we can actually query against the, the information that's in the flat file. Uh, another thing to notice here is uh, we're using this extractors.txt, which basically is going to extract the information from our file, and we're able to give it uh, specific formats. For example, um, specifying what the delimiter is, which is, uh, which is tab in our case. Um, setting quoting to true, which basically means if we see quotes, treat that as a field. And we set the encoding to Unicode, which basically means that we're able to handle international characters, not just US characters. So now that we have the flat file represented in our query here, now we can actually do um, you know, the, the query that we want to do for our business. So right here, as you can see, it's very, uh, very SQL-like. Uh, select country, city, uh, count as number of drivers from drivers, group by country and city, order by number of drivers in the descending order, and fetch the first 10 rows. So um, if you're familiar with SQL, this, this should be pretty familiar as well. From this, from the result, ultimately what we want to do is, is take that result from that query and output it to uh, our output string here. So imagine I click on submit. The next screen that you'll see is the, the job explorer. Um, on the left hand side here, it gives you real time progress of the job as it runs. So it comes from preparing all the way to finalizing. We've got some additional stats here on the left, which is pretty self-explanatory. Well, some of the cooler stuff that we have here is on the right, as the process is going, we're able to visually see you know, the progress of our job as it goes through the, the, the process. Once the process is complete, we get the final result. And as you can see here, we've got our top 10 uh, drivers sorted by number of drivers at the top, and we're able to see it by state and country. In summary, Data Lake consists of two components, the analytics and store. Analytics runs on a per job basis, uh, and you pay only for what you use. Data Lake Analytics Store is a hyperscale repository meant to store big data loads for processing. And finally, you use Visual Studio to create and submit your USQL jobs. Thank you for watching my presentation on Azure Data Lake. My name is Chris Santiago at Project Leadership Associates. If you have any more questions, please feel free to reach me at csantiago at projectleadership.net.